as it were. I don't even want to like say so much the strats. I think it's still just getting comfortable with ILTW a bit. Because like they're coming. How long have they been with him now? It's uh, it's coming up for two months. It's coming up oh, around that long. It's yeah. been that long now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that? that's a little they're bit longer than I thought him, it was. They then. played with him for the first time in the minor, right? Yeah. Oh, that's right. They did play with him before. Trunchy. So we're, yeah. we're getting up to what six, seven weeks now. Yeah, seven weeks. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's right. But still, I think it still does take time to get used to get your whole formula together, and there's still it's there's patches constantly happening. Things always changing, strategy changing, and. Noto likes to play his summons heroes, right? So he's, yeah. we're going to be seeing these chants and chanters in Furion, so if those are popular, seconds, that's where they could be pretty strong. Yeah, I spoke to Seb yesterday, and he he feels that ILTW now is now... They know enough about him that he's an OG-style player. Yeah, okay. And that's good news, because then they found someone that fits in it. It's a bit like, you know, when you look back and you think, they had resolution, and you think, wow. <laughs> what a great player to have in this! But he didn't. He wasn't an OG player, was but it, no, he? Not that style. I don't. I, I. I think it's less about style, and I think it's just more about trust. I mean, that's what I meant when I said yeah, you can't just plug in team. that one big hero. It's. It's like Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. You have to build that trust. I have no idea what you're talking oh, about. Oh, all right. I'm not Kyle. No, I'm NFL. Kyle. I know. NFL. <laughs> Sorry, NFL, I'm not Kyle. NFL. Uh, let's move on from NFL to draft because uh, we're almost uh, underway. In fact, we are underway with. Uh, hmm. First phase, uh, Lone Druid. Lone yeah, Druid, Prophet man. Prophet and Druid. I thought we would see in this series. Okay. Um, Ten seconds, Dire Team Ban. They? Yeah, they haven't played They have not run. Man. I don't think they've run uh, Lone, Lone Druid. They have. Resolution they ran it last it. game. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah, but that was the old last game, but that was the only game that they've run Lone Druid in the last two patches. I believe no, so. No, no, no. Because no. I just looked Re at it. Rezo's played it. Played it in the last game. That's the only time that they've run in the last two patches. That Dota may be wrong. Yeah, I've, got, I've got him playing at least two games of it in the Fair last uh, But here's the thing. Um, I still think, I think oh, Lone Druid is a, is a hero yeah. that yeah. can give OG a lot of problem. In terms okay. of, again, he's a hero that if you're able to win oh, fights in the mid game, can convert those objectives. 10 obvious ban. Uh, Life Stealer has been coming up. He played it 14 days. Yeah. Oh, all right. Oh, Unu I, unusually. Uh, I didn't refresh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh -huh, yeah. Oh, it's, it's unplugged. Yeah. Oh, I think so. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna award myself a guys. award. That, that's, uh, let me just write that down. And like I was mentioning, One you know, up um, over. <laughs> Nahaz. The summons heroes, of course, forward's gonna ban out to yeah. Nahaz. Red eye. Nahaz was left. Red eye. Put a hashtag in front of that. There we go. One up over Nahaz. Are you gonna? So rarely that that is worth writing down. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll here to fact check. Moment. I'll be here to make sure that you get Thanks, them right. Buddy. I got I appreciate you. it. So and one of the things that when you look back over four dress that four dress that really strike you is they're they're just there's no identity. Yeah. They're really a, a team in search of But at least they're in, of, least they're in meta though. They're, they are playing meta heroes. They're testing things. Yeah. They're, they they you know yesterday yeah. they're like they're all right, Grimstroke heroes, they lost but... and they're like all right no more Grimstroke. Yeah. Now they're switching. They're like, all right, Crystal yeah. Maiden. Ten they won the game for the first game, and then they lost the second one with sure. it. So, but they're, it's experimentation. It's still trying to learn. But they gotta, remaining. they really gotta pull these wins out here. Turn to pick. At least what they need. At least. God, what are they at right now? Uh, they uh, are at one and what, uh, no, uh, five, one and two and four. four one and four. Five. One and five, I think. No, they're two. They have two. They won over. Oh game. yeah, that's right. That's right. So they're one two and four. Five. They were one and yeah, three two, after two, yesterday. Sorry, two four. So yeah. Okay, two, four. so that's not as bad as. Them. Turn four. So um, they ideally the same, won at least one. It's win. the same as Mineski yes. right now, which is going to prove to be remaining. potentially the, the decider between yeah. those. Five so seconds they, they absolutely want to go one one. Yes. At least, yeah, at course, least but, one one. Can't afford yeah, to drop. They can't afford one. to drop. They ban out the Monkey King too. I think that's appropriate ban. I think. Yeah. So uh, Mineski is taking on Gambit by the way. Are we going to see an Ench? Are we going to see something like an Enigma? Coddle still in the pool. I think Cottle's probably going to be the first for pick. Yep. That's been a really I think pick, Forward could even first pick it. Yeah. I we're still, I, I, yeah. I look back, I, I still like that. that they had an oh, Enigma wait, Rush open that I quite liked. I was but confusing yeah. I was like, wait. Uh, OG first. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what do you think about, Yanis, what do you think about Cottle in this pack? Cottle seems super strong. He's, uh, like, a little bit weak. He still pressures in lanes, mm -hmm. but he's a little bit weak, but then mid-game hits and he's, like, this king. I think the, team fights are crazy. I think the one big thing that I look at with Coddle is that he's no longer this S tier late game here. Remaining. Because Refresher sure. no longer does nearly as much. You can't but now you can offset the, the whip. You can go for other remaining. items. That's the thing sure. is you can go for like your Hex. I saw the Hex yesterday versus I think it was like a Storm Spirit mm -hmm. and 
he has this plus 350 cast range with a hex. He's in the tree lines and he hexes this guy from a, like a thousand range. I was like, oh my god, that's actually insane. But now you have other items you can go, which okay. I still think is value as the hero, because I don't think of the hero as only the Will-O-Wisp. I think that hero, the shocker is incredibly powerful, and the blinding light are insane inside of team fights. I hadn't thought of that, and that's that's going to be the big thing for me as we go on this patch, that Coddle's a hero that's always going to get a lot of gold. Can he do as much with that gold as when we saw a Refresher in the last patch? If the it's answer gonna is different. yes, then he's going to be, be a, It's going to be a little bit different. He's not going to be an AoE massive, like, just OP, like, this crazy, you know, it's like a black hole that's not channeling. Pretty much. So, so we were just looking at these numbers, Giannis, yes, before this draft. And yes. Ember Spirit is crushing in this event, and his numbers in the previous patch. Eleven were actually games, awesome. Seventy-three percent win rate right now. Do right? you think that this is? You think this is a first phase hero? This patch. He is starting Five to seem like it. Remaining. He really is. He, Why the, is he? <laughs> I know. Yeah. No. It's like the the little like slight buffs. The the yes. things I've been seeing with people like using slight early on now this too, because it's getting good. changed a lot. Seems really interesting. Secure range creeps. Jug is actually a hero that I think I just looked at that. I think he's been losing most, he's right? Been, yeah, he's really struggled. Yeah, Jug has been uh, a bit rough. But he is with the combo. He's I think the Lich Jug Lich Lich is yeah. a bit of a difference. And, and this is something that they. Like, this is a, a definitive what? forward first two. By the way, that's a hugely yeah. smart Nyx Assassin ban. I have seen these, these like N Lich Nyx Assassin tri lanes yeah. are just. Horrid. Oh, yeah. Uh. I mean, you have a Coddle and an Ember and on your team, yeah. too. I think you have <laughs> yeah. to ban Nyx when you're playing with these two. You kill your yeah, Coddle, you're easily hunted. Ember Spirit, you're easily hunted. Great ban. As yeah. forward, Five another one of No Tail's heroes taken out. Enchantress, too. I think uh, that's an over ban, though, because I think No Tail has generally been uh, the one playing Coddle. It has a dispel for the Lich. Uh, good call. Yeah. Good call. The enchant dispel is pretty annoying for Frost. So we're looking at potentially an Oracle for it. Go ban? Perhaps, actually. So uh, I think so the, other, the other thing is that Oracle could be a pick for I, you. Probably don't want to want, run Lich Oracle as your two supports, but I like Oracle against Ember for reasons that we talked mm. about in the last year. Oh, Oracle's uh, Ember hates playing. Ten seconds. The Pango ban makes sense yeah. after what happened yesterday, right? They yeah. ran an anti mage, and this Pango lucky shot was Five brutal. Seconds. So they have an Ember spirit, kind of similar. You know who's still? They... You know who's still in the pool for OG third? Uh, OG. Dire team pick. Oh, how have they been? How have they been? Uh, have they been playing around it too much lately? Not as they much. Played Mag but a couple times. In, it, they played Mag OD in one of yeah. the, uh, Mag uh, Ember in one of those games against Alliance. But which, you, you heard what Seb said yesterday, right? But, but he doesn't like Magnus as much, yeah. No, it, yeah, the patch hurt him. Yeah, but he's still. I mean, he's still, still good, favorite. but he's it's still not the way it was. The skewer is slow. He's a big like, Mag player. Yeah. The skewer is now like scale. Everything has just gotten hit on that yeah. hero. Skewer still slow attack speed though. He was over nerfed. Five yeah. seconds remaining. <laughs> doesn't say, but. That's slow text. This uh, is yeah, actually and, and made it this The far. OD was the other one I was surprised it got second phase for both teams. Actually, they're both like. What were you saying, Yanis? CK? CK made. CK got just got yeah. banned. I didn't notice. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Take take but yeah, the OD is the is the other hero that both of these. I think the Ursa is one. Oh, the thing is, they already have the jug. Because I see Ember. Whenever I see Ember, I just think this Ursa, and he can just run over. Oh yeah, absolutely. But. Now with the jug, maybe. Is uh, don't Monkey, forget, there was, uh, Monkey there was King a, is still available? He's banned. There was a brilliant bait okay. on this Ember oh, yesterday, Turn by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where they pulled out a Meepo. Final. That was, was uh, uh, Chaos. 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 Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, they, they had this early Ember, and everyone was like, oh, okay, early Ember, yeah, we can counter that. All the focus went on to that, and then last pick Meepo. But, and then they so, were like, oh. And it's true, Mr. I want to ask yeah, you about this, great, this great Beastmaster hero, though, Fog, because this is a hero that, to me, in the last patch, if there's Mag. There's yeah. Mag, good call. Uh, in the last patch, I looked at Beastmaster, and, like, Beastmaster and anything, to me, was an awesome open. I don't feel that way about him in this. I just feel like he, he's, he's not looked nearly as fast. Which things did he get hit by? He got hit by a couple... I can't remember the exact things. I know the hawk got changed. None of the, it, the it was board weird damage because, got changed. Yeah, oh, the board back damage. Back a few patches, though, though. I have to. Yeah, I've got to like look just to make sure I know exactly. It is. Yeah, inner beast got nerfed. Five hawk got nerfed. Remaining. Talents got changed. Oh, he got hit a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a lot got hit on him. I don't know if you want to run Oracle and Coddle, but Beastmaster putting pressure on that side, that off lane. They've go. got playmakers. Could no? go Jaraxers. Ten seconds remaining. Beastmaster. Rock. Five seconds remaining. Omni Knight versus the Beastmaster. Rock. Oh my God, that would actually be. <laughs>
That won't do it. It's, for, it's versus Ruby. Uh, give, give me Oracle or Earth Spirit. For sure. Yeah, both those look pretty solid. I guess you could, like, go... Dire team yeah. back. I mean, it's, uh, no. it's an MSS. No! Wow! I guess they're on the other side, but I they did. Say, okay, so they did last don't know pick if, Oracle yesterday. This could be you don't know where Magnus is right now. This yeah. could be Jarek. This could be, this could be Mad, okay. right? I like that. I like that. I think they're leaving it still like. And yeah, you like you said, they did last ninth pick. Uh, where so the forward go then? With the uh, they've got. I do think the lanes for forward are good though. Yeah, they've got two Five two great remaining. absolutely uh, supports. They've got pressure lanes. Pressure I, on the offline. I'm totally, I mean, if I'm coaching forward right now, I'm like, I'm totally happy with this draft so far. Definitely. I mean, yeah. they've got the, Rub the Rubik. The thing I, I was mentioning yesterday was if you see Coddle, I, wanna, I want you Rubik. to try to get the Rubik, right? Yeah. That's... They've got the Rubik versus the Coddle and the Magnus, which is cool. And okay, so, so just, to make, just to check my own understanding, exactly why? I, I think we agree on why, but why do you like Rubik so much against Coddle? Better Coddle, isn't he? You have, a, you have great ways to get that Willow. Yeah. You really okay. do. Okay. Okay. You, you just have, you always have a good way to get that Willow. Okay. So it's it's uh, that's uh, kind of what I thought, but I, I actually think Rubik can can make use of a lot of the steals. Yeah, he definitely. can make use of all the steals. all of the abilities yeah. are great. Yeah. Yeah. All the abilities are great. Kinda, but the but the with, Wisp seal is just so amazing. The Wisp is amazing. Magnus is kind of similar. Anything you get is pretty good. Yeah. Shockwaves, a lot of damage, power, probably even maybe even better yeah. than. <laughs> like anything, RP I think, to a, I think to a lesser extent yeah. because the thing the thing that I was gonna say is that Dying. when I see Rubik picked against Kyle, people talk a lot about the old steel. And I actually think Illuminate and Blinding Light are both really good steals. Like, yeah, Blinding huge. Light's amazing. Yeah. Blinding Light is absolutely amazing. And there is okay, the there is the tiny. They did pivot yeah. back for that. Very cool. All right. And the Oracle ban by forward. So, so what are we? Ban. This is a the we need, ban, a, we need a UR here yeah. here for the OD, the OD ban. Is the OD ban was earlier. sick. Yeah. yeah, you had Ten to do that. Been a UR's favorite oh, the last month. As well, um, he's the still got a few left in there. Though. Marana, DK, Ursa is still there. Uh, he's been a he's been a big Pugna guy lately too. There's still an Ursa. I want something to bring them together. Um, Just like so they can actually group up and use this Beastmaster, use this healing ward, use this push that they kind of have. What about the Deuce? Ooh, Deuce feels crazy like it, about that it's hero too right now, I think it might be too slow. It, the Ursa is weird because... Yeah, alright, alright. Uh, two for Paul. I just think I like, I like the hero on paper. I mean, it's Dusa against four melee heroes yeah. and Coddle. Yep. But it's, I think you're going to get run off the map. It's an interesting draft on both sides, though. So it's, it's got some logic behind it, hasn't it? On both sides. Yeah, that's the hero. Does Deuce get online? In can she? I mean, can she fight in this game with like three three wraith bands? Yasha, three wraith bands. The thing is, they have a lot of pressure coming from side lanes, right? Lich Jug is pretty strong pressure. Beastmaster yeah. Rubik should be able to put pressure to make space for the Dusa. The more I think about it, like this Seems might be okay. a situation where, like what we saw for for Nisha's Naga, where it's is okay. Medusa really going to get pressured? But I just. It seems okay, I just don't like Newest Medusa Five too much in the patch, remaining. and I think Ember it just looks like a much more dominant mid-game hero that could just run over. I'm liking yeah. a little bit more what OG's this got. Is, i tell you what, this is much more even than I thought it would be okay. going into the draft. Does a lot come down to this mid-matchup, or, yeah. or is, is the game going to go elsewhere? I think you watch Medusa's farm. And yeah, we watch Medusa's farm. More than anything else. Thank you very much. Uh, time to head over to our commentators for series number two. Thank you for your patience as well. Hope you enjoyed the uh, Q&A session. Bit earlier on, but it's time to get underway in our first game. Gents, are you ready? Very ready. I'm very, very much ready. looking forward to this because, yeah. uh, I mean, I feel like it's OG who've been kind of on the up this tournament yep. and yep. forward who've kind of been on the. What do, you make of the what do you make of the draft, though, boys? Uh, I mean, I'm always a fan of Magnus plus one lineups because I think mm. that it's very easy to. But at the same time, I kind of agree with Cap and forward being a little bit shakier than we're used to. All right. Well, enjoy. Take us away. OG versus forward, you know, at the start of this tournament, this could have been looked at as forward being the favorites. I mean, after all, this is a really star-studded lineup, and it just hasn't... They haven't really hit, like, great success, and at this tournament, it seems like they've just been bottoming out. Yeah, 
board it for me anyways is like it's kind of sad because if you look at their roster and what they achieved last year and you think of like that one-to-one -one swap like we move snake king a lot of people would uh, agree that universe would be considered an upgrade over snake king UTI winner consistent success and what we always learn about dota is it's never that easy just having that one-to-one -one swap like when they moved remember when uh secret moved misery and weha for artesian universe a lot of people would agree that that was an overall upgrade in skill but look how sure. how much of a tumble they took as a result of that it's these things you don't really quite realize what somebody brings to the table maybe snaking as a personality was easier to handle not saying that universe is difficult to work with but maybe it just fit them <laughs> That's about everything i've heard it yeah, would have been no. the opposite i heard but... universe is a very easy person to work with but you yeah. don't know the hidden things that somebody brings it's like the move for moon swap right yeah it's, it's all these little things that you never really quite think about it's not that the player is necessarily worse it's the fit that matters in dota that's why in my opinion like aster for example you look at that team individually if you were to list it one by one you're thinking to yourself that's a pretty good team and you know it was a discussion it together. on the panel they were talking about um every team that universe is on comes problem of cores and how you actually split up farm yeah because universe is a very specific player okay like he i think universe is somebody that uh is, he's a playmaker, but at the same time, like you need to give him a prerequisite amount. So when I think of universe, I think of like the Earthshakers, the Darkseers, mm -hmm. the Faceless Voids, like the ones that need a little bit more. And that's saying it, it's not necessarily like universe is being a dig. And he's like, I want farm, give me time. Like it's also he's just an accomplished enough and talented enough player that you want to give him yeah, yeah. those kind of roles, you can't, right? You can't. The, the thing about Dota is like your pub history matters so much. If you've been playing a certain style competitively. Uh, and in pubs like a certain way, you can't, it's really hard to switch out of it. Yeah. That's why we don't see, like we see roll swaps, but we see them within like the one or two position. That's like what Liquid does, for example. But you don't see people just like completely change. That only happens when you have a veteran of like 10 years that really understands how to play support. Right. You know, Arteezy always jokes, he's like, one day, you know, like three years when I've gotten third of my like 18th TI, I'm going to finally play five <laughs> position. Resolution. He's going to be playing, uh, a Juggernaut with SVG Lich top lane. We see in this bottom lane an Ember Spirit Coddle versus the uh, Beastmaster. Not so much. Backed up. Rubik, what do you think about this uh, this duo and how do you think MSS has actually transitioned from an offlaner into a four? Oh, I mean, he was always a four. Uh, that's what. Remember the. Oh, his hold that thought is Seb almost gets killed, but I uh, remember when he was on that Liquid squad with Bluff in them and he was ringing for them. Yeah. He was mainly playing four in that role. So I think this is more of his natural roots. And then he played mid for EG. Remember the roster with Fog? Shout out to Fog. Oh, that was a terrible roster, no offense. <laughs> I remember they were they played at that MLG tournament that Speed ended up winning, uh -huh. and they were garbage. Yeah. And even when he was playing uh, three position, like it was a very aggressive, sacrificial. Yeah. And I think three. he's the type of player that just needs to run at people. Yeah. Like even when he was playing mid, I I recall very strongly that Earth Spear was his hero in the mid lane. Like plays back then it was doable. Remember because you could do the kick trick, yeah. broken piece. Of <laughs> but. Jerks. Trying to make sure that SVG can't get any pulls here. This should be uh, a pretty good lane for Magnus, right? Like, you've got an offlaner that can actually deal with the pressure of the Lich Slow plus Juggernaut spin. Yeah. What makes offlane, I think, really interesting is, like, it depends on what... The matchup depends on, like, can you kill the offlaner and how easy it is. Yeah. Because if you can, you know, uh, if Seb knows that he can't die because he's got Skewer, he can play however he wants. He can play more aggressively, yeah, he, can he can get a lot more CS. As long as he's got like 250 health uh, and he's got skewer up, he can play as aggressively as he wants. Yeah, and it naturally snowballs, right? It means you're not getting denied any of that CS, you're getting the stats you need. Yeah, and then once Mac gets three, uh, actually I guess four, you get that level of empower and then it makes it really hard for this melee carry to just sit there. Uh, your ex is getting chased down a little bit. Jerks. It's down to 15 health. Would be able to survive, it looks like. They're doing that thing. Dyer's Do you see? Is under but yeah, the toss of the range creeps. You can yeah. see that up there in the radiant off lane. They keep on tossing the the range creeps over to deny them away from forward. Now, eventually forward's gonna be able to kill those, but at least for the laning phase, it's gonna be a pain. What did you expect? So silly. It really is. Forever. That bother you? Alone. 
Does it bother you that you can do that? Kind of. I mean, it's just one of those things like, it works right now, but it's a cheesy mechanic that's gonna get patched up. You yes. know it is. That's why initially I refused to play Chaos Knight. So I was like, this is stupid broken. This is getting patched up. I mean, the thing about it is, exploit the game how you can until it gets changed, right? Yeah. You can't blame Navi for doing the, the hook thing, right? Do you have a problem with it? Well, if you're a Loda, you can play. Okay, God. I can understand, though. I mean, they ended up winning that tournament, didn't they? Well, no, that was TI2, right? I think that was TI. Was it the one where he was on Zenit? It was when he was on Zenit. Oh. Nope. They actually got a first blood on the, uh... On the Embers? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. These master pressures just too much. Zep. They're swinging. They're damaged, but Again, he still he, has skewer at any point in time. He doesn't really care about it. So Jarex can continue to just do this toss trick. Thanks to the stats of the power, you can see 7, 17 and zero right now. Plenty of CS for not. Compare that to like the Ember Sphere to 17 and 1. Zep is gonna finally skewer, but he actually picks up Resolution. Resolution managed to get in front of him, and that's gonna be a successful kill. Toss back of the Lich. Not gonna be quite oh it did it's one tower shot. But only one, so that's me. A little bit of an issue there. Rezo is actually just going to straight up go for the bounty runes. Jerex is going to pick one of them, but... I guess the other prerequisite that the, we didn't really list is you can't uh, secure somebody back with you. You got to make that trip solo. The panel did say that uh, the biggest thing that we're going to be watching for this game is Deuce's farm. How do you think that this game's gonna play out? For they were they were talking about like, is this gonna be enough time? Is the Dusa gonna be able to line fast enough? The interesting thing is that both lineups, I think, have like slow paces in some ways. Yeah. Like, OG, when you play Mag plus any uh, melee core with like troll and stuff, you want to abuse the fact that you're giving up a free battle fury, right? You don't want to just immediately fight with that hero. Having it doesn't mean. You, you want to just continue to get further ahead. Having the Empower doesn't mean like, okay, I'm ready to find out. Okay, I'm ready to hit Ancient Creeps or like them. Yeah. But that also allows the Dusa to get farm. The good news, I think, for Ford's lineup is that they do have heroes that can play quick around this Dusa. Like this Beastmaster, I think Universe will determine the majority of this game. If Universe can get online fast enough, make these moves with his Vlads, you take this bottom tier one tower early enough, then you can start playing the mid area and just playing this like, harass game. Then I think it's actually quite nice. It's Jarex. Doesn't have mana? Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. Just he didn't have not. mana for the top. He was short by, uh... Five mana? I don't think the war dies anyway. He's got a fairy fire foot. And he's got mana shield. Radiant it is remarkable scan. how uh, similar these lineups are, right? They both have, like, kind of a hard carry mid that's going to scale into the game. They both have a natural accelerator out of their offlaner. Beastmaster <laughs> enables the Deuce to come on like, faster with his aura. You've got the empower for the troll. And then both of them have a safe lane that is a big space creator that, that comes online pretty early, is able to get, you know, just kind of run around the map solo and free to kill whatever he finds. That's what I'd like to see out of Rezo this game. I know typically the meme is like, you know, for protect Rezo. Yeah. But I think Rezo should be aggressive in this. Like, he right. can't play his typical style, I think, of just trading out farm. I feel like when you have a deuce on your team, she's such an immobile hero. Wherever she goes, she's not going anywhere else. She's just going to march down that lane just sort of sit there as like this unwavering target. Yeah. Rezo thinking about just... <laughs> Alright, now he's gonna yeah. start killing some of those range creeps, or at least the ones that he can reach. He can get them, don't worry. You can get all of them. Oops. To the left, there you go. Side to side now. You will be he's got him. And so in the end, did it really affect his laning phase? Uh, it did in the short term, right? Because it brought yeah. Seb's lane back. But they still managed to kill Seb. Jarex is now just a low machine. I don't think of Mag. I mean, Mag and Beastmaster are obviously two heroes. Universe going to be caught here. The Avalanche is going to come out. Triple Remnant is spot up. ILTW not quite enough to be able to finish off Universe. The Blast in there. It goes No Tail's going to be able to get him. Get Rezo, though. Early rotation. Is yeah, what I said. TP, though, from be... No Tail. You want this guy to be aggressive, though. Rezo, yeah. like, he, he just has to be the one to make moves. Dusa just hits this triangle of arm and just sits there. She's gonna get really far ahead as a result. How many Dusa games in my pub? Dusa gets a little bit behind, farm out this area, get the early levels of the split shot, 
You just get one level of the mana shield, you're fine. You can hit three camps at once. VG and the tree might be able to get away. Jerks does manage to get the toss. Universe is here, slowing him down with the boar. Kind of body blocking SVG, but it doesn't matter. OG already trying to retreat, and they do have the TPN of the Rubik. Nice toss away from Jerex, but MSS is there. Kill. Now they're going to switch things up a little bit as Seb. Level 5 is a result of the long amount of time that they were dueling. Right now, forward do have a bit of a lead off phase. But it's this bottom lane now where... Uh, who do you really sit up down here? I guess they can just send the Ember again. Master has already shown top. Normally what ends up happening is they both try to take this tower down. That's exactly what's going to happen is ILTWC. It's just a jug by himself. I should tower is under attack. be that afraid. Put in the one-to-one -one laning phase. Like, Isn't that still going to be... If, if Ember Spirit's just kind of like stuck here in this lane against Jug, isn't forward going to be more... Yeah, I think so. Because you you still know that your deuce is getting farmed in the jungle. Like whenever you have these ancient hitters or these people that can just farm in that jungle early on, uh, it makes it so that MSS for example just sit mid so XG. And that's really CW sick. trying to blow up SVG thanks to the toss back from Jerex and nice. once again no tail is there. Clutch the kill. I don't think SVG should be down here. I don't think he serves any purpose because Rezo doesn't really need his help and they're not going to have any kills. Right? Like, they're not going to kill him. Resolution getting aggressive here, knowing the Ember Spirit doesn't have a whole lot of remnants left, just one of them. Oh, you might Final just go for Rezo no instead? Rezo still has that Omni Slash. He could have used it on No Tail, but maybe feeling like he did damage. Little oh, health support. Jerex does manage to get the toss in the chains oh, as well. Rezo oh, no! Ooh. That wasn't the play they wanted off of Jerex. Resolution. That's rough. That was well done, though. They faded it. Just delivered For a the second, kill. I thought, I was like, Jerex, you mother... <laughs> I would have been so mad if I was ILTW and I yes. died that way, but had the remnant up the Dyer's entire time, they knew they were... And now the, the kill threat is entirely over. So being down here, I think, is yep. kind of a no point. That's why I wanted to see somebody mid. And that Yawar now, as a result of the Rubik not being here, uh -huh. or the Lich not being here, has to come back from the jungle camp to defend his tower. Mid lane. Thinking about trying to pressure Yawar, but... TP in from the universe. And back away bottom, they are going to be able to run down no tail. Flight of his bouncing around, Jerex almost enough to be able to finish off MSS. He needs another swing, but now slowed down by SVG. It's the Amber Spirit who's going to be able to claim his life with the Flight of his, but he's been caught by the Beastmaster. Zero away, put him on the high ground. Resolution can't get the damage immediately. Another slide is going to dodge some time, but he's completely out of mana. Won't be able to escape forward. Forward just controlling so much of this bottom lane. OG, do you think they should even be in this situation. No, you I don't said think they should have gone bot. Yeah. I feel like you just mirror and go top and allow your uh, your supports to get some levels. You can move the troll with them power off that lane and let Zed take that lane into that. I mean, I know why they rotated in because they they wanted to punish the fact that two supports were bottom, but then Deusa just came back in, made the correct play instead of just hitting Ainge. I, I think right now the play is for one of the supports, like MSS most likely, to just TP into this mid lane and then just sit there and pull off the creep wave, allow your Deusa to get farmed, Punish the fact that OG made that play at bottom. I would have preferred the Rubik because I think he can nuke the creep way a lot easier. But I mean, he went top instead, which is fine too. Like you're gonna you're gonna enable both of your supports now, which is what you wanted on the side of OG, and that's what that mirror would have allowed you to have. But now it's kind of slowed down as a Radiant's result. Now Seb's gonna take this top lane instead of one of the supports. It makes it a little bit harder now for Jarex to get back in. Like if you look at Jarex, he's level four. It's 12 minutes in. Is he's gonna do some Tasha shenanigans? I, Rizzle, okay. You stalled my farm for two seconds. Grats? Still got the big attack. ILTW. Rezo still gonna commit. Can always just. Now on Jerex. No tail is ready to go. Now the magic immunity is gone. They have the CP and cover. The Magnus is gonna be here. Okay. Not quite fast enough. Resolution managed to dodge the skewer. They're gonna pull him back in here as the Will O Wisp comes out. Resolution. Gonna be stuck here for a while, but he does have SVG and Universe waiting in the wind. Just in now. might be able to protect him. Resolution protects himself with that magic meter to now tops it. Ooh, Primal War is gonna be able to stop all that physical damage that was gonna come in. The Chain Frost bouncing around, but the Lich is now dead. These two are quite low. Thompson is gonna be able to pop his ultimate beyond the slash, as well as now that hold from Yawar. Thompson is gonna die eventually here, but maybe he can actually finish off the two. He does right before he goes down. ILTW is now gonna chase these very low health heroes. Universe on one side. Where 
there. We've got the Juggernaut trying to make his way out of here. Universe is definitely stuck. Resolution managed to juke his way out of the Ember Spirit's grasp. Wow, and he, he went by the Creep Wave too, the neutrals, so that if ILTW tried to chance the... Uh, the slight into chains. Yeah, but he didn't have it anyway. But a good overall fight. That could have been even better for four. If they just committed to helping the Dusa, I think it's because you get tr tricked into thinking, oh, well, the trolls got one hit. Yeah. Oof. You're that like, ah, that blast, ultimate's though. gonna wear out eventually. That's a mistake. That is gonna be a problem later on to the game, right? How effective that stone gaze is against the troll. Nice. Just a really great way to heal and delay the troll's effectiveness during that ult. That's why they took Dusa, right? Against two melee uh, cores. Yeah. I know some people say, like, technically, a Later on, he doesn't want to. Bash people. Do you want to bash people? They die by our hand, not yours. Rezo is now going to sit mid. Both teams, if you watch our cast yesterday, protecting the power, doing a very good job of that, trying not to. I feel like OG now should try to either all in for this mid tower or go to the top with three heroes. Kind of create that area, like play around where you're working. An MSS doing it, you said. It seems like to me, no matter Go what top. it is, off lane, mid, when you have a tower advantage, it seems like the team that has the tower advantage always defends. Yes, you should, because you have this inherent advantage now that uh, you know people have to move through. But I think that OG should have just gone top, taken that top, or commit for the like, all in for heroes. CG was spotted for a moment, Slight hits him. Resolution is one, tops the chain. This is That's gonna good. be the mid tower falling. Now I think you try to go for top. They're instead just gonna go into this Roche pit. I guess they have Vlad's wow. plus uh, Empower. They think that they're strong enough. That is bold. It is, because they haven't even taken that top tower. And SVG kings his team. They smoke up. They gotta go fast, though. Nope. They've got plenty of time. Yeah, this is gonna take a while for Thompson to do it all by himself. The Hawk is gonna come in, give them plenty of vision, which is, again, uh, kind of another curious fact that OG are just willing to go straight into the Roshan pit, despite the fact that Bulwark can get that clear vision out from the Hawk. Yeah, this is really bold. Like, I, I can't believe they went for that. Maybe you can do it, but it feels like such an unnecessary risk. When you could just go for that top tower instead. And RP, now... outage juggernaut, gonna be able to all him into Thompson. Rezo still alive, though. He's gonna be survived, thanks in part to that Lich Frost Shield. Jerex comes in from behind. Will be able to do a lot of damage to support. That's gonna be the Lich down MSS and half out. Great Will O' Wisp, but Primal War out from Universe is gonna be able to stall the Ember Spear's damage. That oh, was gonna Will O' that Will so much. It was able to pull you are in one more time, and now he's gonna be chased down by Seb as well as Thompson. No one snares just yet. There it is. Double kill for ILTW, and finally OG get the team fight that they wanted all along off of that very forceful attempt at Roshan. That was so funny. Like Jarex actually just walked in behind everybody. But he just casually struts in, gets a four-man stun toss, and then just kind of walks out. And as a result, that fight just completely turns around, bored. And that was hilarious. He actually just kind of strolled through, without a care in the world. And now they're gonna get the road shot. As a result of that fight, man. Do you think I that was like, like, you look at this lineup forward with the Beastmaster, the greediness of having Beastmaster and Medusa. This very awkward, like 15 to 20 minute, like neither one of them really does it. You could yeah. see why OG would be willing to force a fight any way they could. It was just a really awkward engagement for 4 2. The Beastmaster roars, but the rest of his team is cut off by that beautiful Will O Wisp. Yeah. That made it so that the roar was completely nullified. They couldn't take advantage of that. Oh, that was, uh, that was an ominous slash. Saw that one on the mini map resolution hopping around. Looks and like he tip. tried to go for Jerex. The tilt tip. OG. You got it. Oh, an Aegis and a thousand net worth. No Tails Will O Wisp was so clutch there, though. The fact that uh, he was able to just completely cut off that fight, the two supports from OG definitely won that one. Who did Beastmaster roar? I think he roared... He roared the Ember Spirit because okay. he, he basically wanted to stop the damage that was going to come. But that's Old. really their only hard lockdown aside from the lift. I yeah. guess you can count Gaze, but SVG isn't tanky enough to 5-on-5 five five walk in full duration <laughs> Gaze anybody. He yeah. doesn't even have a level yet. So they're only real hard disable aside from the lift, which is okay, but it's going to be your roar. And once that's down, OG, even though they didn't have uh, Mag RP, their heroes can actually still fight with the Will-O-Wisp, with Tiny walking in behind everybody. OG are not immediately going to try and use this Aegis to push down towers or anything. Control had an Aegis stack to go through. They're letting Beaver Spirit just come 
play his own game while the three two supports as well as the off OG have been secure their own jump a little bit. Clear the way for top. See, Thompson been quite a lot of time. And worth out of the jungle to the Magnus and the stack new bait. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of heroes forced down to that bottom lane. Free tier one now. OG is getting all kinds of free towers. That's the benefit that having that Aegis. So they're just not going to really contest. It looks like they're going to grab this tier two tower up top for free. I'd like to see forward play this a little bit quicker and just have people committed to taking that bottom tower. I think at this point you have to go for the trade. And OG. Maximizing the space they've got here, pushed in both mid while joining Thompson to hit top lane. They don't want to get too greedy and spread themselves too far around the map. It's a neat move uh, by OG. They're playing very decisively. They pushed in this mid lane too, just in case they want to try to uh, go for a two for one. And they're smoked up, but it's unlikely that anybody from four just goes up there. And it even looks for... like a high ground approach. Yeah, the high ground, just a force forward back, right? And it may be an opportunity for ILTW to catch somebody, but rather he's caught by Universe with a Primal War in the inside of the tree. Nice. They are going to be able to take away that Aegis, but the tier 3 is dropping fast. This cannot be worth it. Get out, get out. ILTW is very happy with this situation. He's going to be able to join up at the top lane. We're going to see the Will Wills come out. Once again, you are done. Man, to get off the showcase. Ryan's he was running out of mana. He gets the stall. We'll be able to stay alive a little bit longer, but the Will Wills is holding him there. The RP comes down onto the Juggernaut. Oh. He tried to spin in, Thompson is staying alive, and he is fighting resolution to the death. And death it is for Rezo. He falls a buyback immediately out of UR's Medusa as he watches his core go down. He's got to find a way to be able to bend these Raxes, but they just don't have the damage anymore. UR doesn't have the damage by himself, and Universe already using that Primal War. They have no hold. A nice jump in from Seb. Skewer back. That's going to be Universe dead as well now. SVG on the front line is going to be able to grab Ember Spirit by the a little bit of time, but MSS almost dies in the Ember Spirit. ILTW jumps away last second. Jared's jumping in oh now God, to make sure that ILTW stays alive. The Mystic Snake comes out. It doesn't kill Jarex either. Thompson's getting OG back. OG are pushing this to the limit right now. All right, everyone's got like 100. Oh, they're going to bring him back. back. You are going to tie back. Unbelievable. OG, they play it to the bitter ends that they could. If you combine all four of their HPs, uh, aside from No-Tails, they have like a combined 300. <laughs> Radiance mm. that Holy just, shit, that was such an outplay. You got styled on so hard right there. Oh my god. OG are feeling themselves. That's when you know. They were not afraid of anything. They're like, our, all our cores have like 100 health. No problem. You see Thompson run in, he would die to a snake. He just keeps baiting him closer and closer so that Seb can blink back, bring him back in. Oh, that was mechanically so well done. Like, the impact difference that you're feeling between this Magnus, even though he, he went for that one RP, it didn't really lead to anything, like, he's taking the opportunities to just go for it consistently. And as a result, it's paying off. It was like, Universe, I feel bad for him because I think this game is pretty rough for a Beastmaster. If you're your only lockdown, I always say it, like, if you're the only lockdown, you're always going to look bad because everything relies on you. We see that again. I mean, it was just a brilliant setup by OG at the start. It kind of forced forward to split up in some ways, and... It's the fact that they use the gate. They uh, they control the Deuce long enough so that her gaze came out at the tail end of her mana pool. Yeah. So that even when they turned into stone, they couldn't fight. Jump back in live here to watch Universe die again. You're right. This is not a fun Beastmaster game. Willow is going to come out as Rezu doesn't have the spin to protect himself. Manta away, but still going to get pulled one more time. The TPs are going to be oh, here from MSS OG. MSS, nice. Willow is stolen. And a telekinesis on Thompson as well. Makes sure that they do manage to get out on at least their cores. Unfortunately, MSS himself, the sacrificial. Jarex is... Oh, this, is, this has got to be so annoying to play against. He just keeps tossing people back. He's tipping. He's doing the tilt tip as well. <laughs> OG, 8,000 gold lead. They don't need to wait for a second Roshan, it seems like, to take more objectives. Setting themselves up 
Mid's pushed in. Bottom lane is pushing in as well. There's still plenty of uh, tower networks to be claimed. Thompson! Well, he does have his ultimate. Oh, nice! Oh, oh, from Jerex. That is beautiful. Gets him away from that Omni Slash. And now Thompson can go back in, still with his ultimate ready to go. Jerex is still alive for the time being. Might go down as the boar is on top There's of There's just too many slows, but Thompson sees this opportunity to go for you. Are. Immediately you are. Pops that stone gaze. So he's so afraid of the troll's damage with that Diffusal Blade. Very quickly can rip through that mana shield. So oh, down MSS. MSS, who has his telekinesis here, but yeah, LGW is going to be able to get the chains out. Trying to protect himself with a stolen flame guard. Can't get it, though. If you notice from OG, they have multiple ways to start the fight. Like, ILTW has set up so many different engagements with just his chains. By that game, RP from Seth. He's going to be able to get the two-man skewer back into the whirling axes of Thompson, as well as that cleave. SVG is in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Jerex with that toss save too to start it all off. Popson didn't have an Aegis or anything, no BKB, tosses him out, saves him from the jug Omni Slash. It does die, but I mean, they forced out a Chain Frost on top of that. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Do you think this is a, a lineup problem? Do you think this is a drafting problem? Or uh, I think it's a combination. I think they're getting outplayed. Like that mid fight was definitely getting yeah. outplayed. And that's what led to the Roshan. And that bottom fight too. Their decision to go for that kill Dyer's while their base was being hit. Yeah. ILTW was just like, I have an Aegis. I'm not sure what uh, <laughs> because and the TP's back were so late. It's like nobody on forward noticed for a full like Dyer's four seconds. Shrug. Like, oh wait, our tier three's gone. Dyer's and casually they've lost shrug. the rat. Yeah, it's it it is. ILTW does that in the first place. He puts himself in that situation because if they try and TP back, he's going to stop TP. He's got a remnant there. Yeah. He doesn't care. He'll, he'll make sure that no matter what, it's going to be some sort of weird 4 versus 5, or they're going to be too late to save the tier 3. Jerex being run down here. Doesn't manage to get an avalanche. Blocking in by the Medusa's illusions. Jerex, a lot of hate coming his way. I think it was the, the Chain Frost. Now it's the Primal Roar. It's definitely both, though. Like, if you're, if you're ILTW, this game is really fun for you to play because there's very little that can kill you and yeah. you can always set up with the Searing Chains for your team. Like that, that is the support killer. In this for us, for Or to get any sort of kills even on the support, they've got to, they have to commit the Roar. Yeah. When they don't commit an ult, the Roar or the Chain Frost, they're not getting killed. We saw yesterday when Soxo was playing the Coddle, if you can't get on top of this hero, his team fight contribution is way too good. ETW losing most of his mana from the Mystic Snake of UR. He is still on a break. As I think it's coming out the Will of West, he's going to be able to catch that Juggernaut, Thompson. This is so rough for forward. They just have no teeth whatsoever. They can't do any damage to OG at this point. You are. He's going to be chased down. Look at Jerex. make it back to tier He was three. dead, but he still gives him the all chat taunts. But that's an assist right there. Held in place by the gaze of SVG7. It's going to enable ILTW and Thompson. Another we got more heroes. That's a triple kill now for Thompson. ILTW will be able to grab MSS. I'm not sure. <laughs> Did he just empower Universe? This dying breath. All right. Well, Universe has got cleave. JRX gets tipped back. Dyer's top barracks are under attack. <laughs> But I, yeah, I think it was a combination of OG Dyer's just playing this like perfectly. Get that top fight. Sometimes you know Dyer's when a team is just, they're rolling. They felt that. It seemed like you weren't a big fan of the combination support. Like you're talking about like the multiple ways to be able to start a fight that OG has. So many different ways. Both their supports can start a fight and their offlaner can. Their mid can as well. And then you've got forward who can just flash of inspiration. <laughs> uh, they have a deuce and a jug that don't really do anything set up in the fight. I think they, I, I didn't see the draft order, but I think what probably happened is after they took the mag, did they take the jug? Deny the pick? I'm not sure, but in any case, like I, I think their lineup, you can, you can do stuff with it on the side of forward, but in my opinion, like Dota's always been determined by whose lineup is easier to execute behind it all. You have stuns, get the initiation you can get an initiation off you can always come back and like if you have tools to start a fight yeah get that early four on five or something like that turn the game around but i just don't think more quite have that they need this deuce to continue pace of game do you think it's possible they could just stall on high ground or another 
35 minutes or something? I mean, Dusa games, it's always possible, but I think yeah. that OG right now are, unless they mess up massively, it would take them messing up rather than anything crazy forward to do. But they're going to smoke in. Second all Roshan this. forward cannot allow this to happen. Jerix is positioning himself that way. Forward had to go through him in order to get inside the Roshan pit. His life is going to be well used here as it looks like Jerix will fall. But now the Roshan's already dead. And we're going to have Thompson coming in with that Aegis. Whirling Axis that's going to be Universe as well as MSS down. Stone Gaze popped by Yuar, but I'm not even sure if he's going to get away. Thompson's going to be able to slow him down with another round of ranged Axis. And ILTW is just always on the chase. Chains up in three seconds. <laughs> and forward. I mean, you've got a frost shield, but there's no other assistance that's coming for you are. Their team fight is so good. Uh, <laughs> he about to shave frost back at him. With the uh, with the Everspear being able to start all the fights for them, that they didn't even need to use RPMs. Like that's how comfortably ahead they are. This is really well done by OG. It was the, the mid-fight, the initial one, where they were able to cut the fight off, make the Roar useless, yeah. and the decision by forward to go for that bottom play by OG. I mean, credit to OG, because they were like, well, we'll force them back, and then the opportunity sort of presented it. It's weird, like, because I, I mean, never... the way that game ended, it's just like, it's a great story for the game as a whole, where Thompson's just kind of ignoring all the damage that's being put on him. And he... Yeah. I just... I mean, that...